The Viterazzi Moster 185 is one of the best paramotors that you can get in my opinion and I think I share that opinion with a lot of PPG enthusiasts. But the piston, particularly the clips for them, are a pain in the butt to work with. They're really difficult. This is what the piston's supposed to look like. It's got that nice coating on it. Um, this piston's got maybe 400 hours or so on it in my other hand. And you can see that the coating, it's got the line where it's supposed to be and it's worn away almost completely. The cylinder's still okay because we're replacing it in time. It's one of those preventative maintenance kind of things that you really should do in an aircraft so that you don't have to make an unplanned landing. These are really hard to do on these because they're recessed so deep. I'm going to show you what a couple other manufacturers uh, look like. Uh, these are Vertex pistons, as you see there. This one is from a Polaris. This is a Molly piston. And when you look at how deep the clip is in this compared to the Vertex, the Vertex is like way down there. Look how deep it is. Significant difference, right? One doesn't have the clip in it. And I'll show you how to put it in in a minute. I've been practicing on this old one so I don't ruin the new one. These clips are also a challenge because you don't want to scratch anything on the outside because that is going to come in contact with the cylinder wall with your coating. You can see that this is recessed so you can actually pry something from this side. You can put it in like this. It's kind of a cheater way but it works good. just seat it like it's a bike tire or something and you're in. You can't do that on these. It makes it that much more challenging to do the clips. So this you could scratch and just make a mess. It wouldn't come in contact with the cylinder because it'd be floated over if you will. So that's the Polaris. This piston's from a Subaru and you can see how deep that is compared to this. Uh, the Vertex is just so stinking deep. You can see how this is tapered to help get the clip down in there and the vertex is just machined surface it's just really sharp edges it seems like a bevel cut would be really beneficial there let me show you the right way that you do a clip for most pistons and why you can't do it on this uh, the right way to do a piston clip is to have one side down in the hole but it's so deep that you can't do anything from there so you're supposed to put it in like this first and you should be able to do this with your just your fingers but you can't make that work because it's just way too far down there and furthermore the end of this is scratching up the end of the piston so man, look at that coating it's just gone you're starting to see streaks and stuff in it that's bad so what I found works with this better than anything else is to just pinch it in there what I do is I put it this way and that way you can get in from underneath or the other thing that you can do is have your wrist pin in there I strongly recommend when you replace your piston and your rings that you also replace your needle bearings because those can fall apart and go shrapnel in your crankcase and create a lot of havoc for you and then I'd also recommend that you replace the wrist pin this wrist pin is really worn. There's a bunch of wear marks on it where the hard facing's worn off, especially where it goes into the piston and it was rotating. Uh, but anyway, put that in first, then you just pinch it in like this. It'll get down to uh, where it's hitting on the uh, wrist pin and not go further. And then get a plastic tool or something because these things are really stiff. Always replace these clips when you do the piston too. If one of these fails, this can drift out and just rip your cylinder to pieces which is not safe in aviation and it's uh, expensive too. Less flight time, more work time. So you see what I did there? I got it clicked back in and you just push these down in there by whatever means and then push your uh, pin back the other way. You hear it click and you're in. That way you don't scratch up any of the surface that's going to be rubbing on your uh, cylinder wall. I also took a hone and honed this out. I just used a three stone hone and a drill and you just run that in and out. A lot of these are no brainers. A lot of pistons are really easy to install. To get the clips out, get any kind of a tool or pick or whatever and that's what this little groove is for. Just get underneath of it like that and it just rolls out. This is the way it should go in. That's the way it should be installed. 
but it's so deep it just doesn't work maybe with the wrist pin in there but I'll try it so I've been trying it with no wrist pin because when you put this in you don't have a wrist pin in it I must have fought with this for a long time I actually scratched the snot out of one side of this you can see right there and right there it's not super detrimental except for it was sticking up which is not okay the Nicosil, I'm guessing this is Nicosil because everything else they do is state-of-the-art. I'm guessing that's Nicosil coating. is a lot harder than whatever this is. Magnesium or aluminum or whatnot. Another reason to replace your piston before it fails. See all the temperature issue that this was having. See how that's not the way it comes. If you get too much heat on the back side of this, it can also burn out a hole through the top of your piston. Or if you run a spark plug that's too hot. Let's show putting it in one more time, shall we? Fingers are getting oily. There we go. I'm just going to use the pliers in there. And then we'll push the pin from the other side. And we're clicked in. Alright, well let's get this cylinder put on over the piston. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. dots by the trail they're actually deer there's a whole bunch of them this is the time of year you just want to leave them alone because they've been through a long winter and they're trying to rebound their resources they try to stay high enough that it doesn't bother them i don't think any of them even look up i had to take a couple approaches to this to see a guy up here on the right who's doing lunges across the whole landing strip so i had to go around once but doing so helps you get a good pin on what the wind's doing it makes it a lot easier to come this is what we call a clean landing. Touchdown. So soft and smooth. The faster you come in, the more energy you have to break with. It's counterintuitive, but pretty cool.
I'm too slow. <laughs> I didn't get out of the way in time. Or you're too fast. <laughs> you make that look easy. 